world is a very different place from that experienced by African leaders in the 1960s. We've seen growth in different regions of the world and changes in our understanding of borders as globalization became a reality. As the author John, uh, George Monbiot wrote, and I quote, everything has been globalized except our consent. Democracy alone has been confined to the nation state. It stands at the border, suitcase in hand, without a passport, unquote. It's a humbling thought because how we relate to our continent, how we relate to the world, needs to be mindful of the rate and pace of change uh, as we take decisions. Our perspective on economic development has to start with new approaches to sovereignty, to regional integration, to continental development, and of course the position of Africa in, in global development. Yet, there are issues that we must accept as essential. We cannot return to a time of macroeconomic imbalances, of unsustainable indebtedness, and we must advance an agenda for peace. We must recognize these essentials because if we do not, we will be picked off by those who are only interested in what they can extract from us at the lowest cost, and this will leave our people impoverished. Twenty years ago, my country, South Africa, entered its democratic phase. And at that stage, the centers of power were rested solely in the West. Since then, we've, had, we've experienced a shift in economic power to the East, and more recently, countries like Brazil and Russia are included in that. These are countries and regions that have identified their strengths and addressed their weaknesses to unleash their potential. It is in understanding our position with the determined focus on what appears to be the most difficult challenges that we begin to focus on unleashing the potential of our continent. We must now, more aggressively, and with clear links between policies and implementation, place Africa first. Africa mujiteke kumwando. We cannot do this. We cannot do this without creating stable macroeconomic frameworks, investing in research and development, education and skills, health and infrastructure. We have to build on our gains of the past decade. Between 2000 and 2009, when the effects of the financial crisis that has beset the developed countries of Europe and North America reached our shores, Real GDP growth in sub-Saharan Africa outpaced that of most other regions of the world. During this period, a number of African countries, notably Angola, Ethiopia, Mozambique, and Rwanda, experienced inflation-adjusted growth rates that were higher than Brazil, India, or Russia. African economies are not only growing, they are becoming more favorable environments for investors and for doing business. The World Bank rates Mauritius a better place to do business than it does Germany, and South Africa ranks above Chile. The bank also found that Botswana, Tunisia, Rwanda, Ghana, Namibia, and Zambia all offer more favorable entrepreneurial env environment than a country like China. Economic freedom, that's the ability to work, to earn, to invest, and to spend without interference from the state, has improved considerably over the past 10 to 15 years and countries like Angola, Burkina Faso, Cabo Verde, Ethiopia, Guinea-Bissau, Madagascar, Mozambique, and Nigeria are part of this. As a starting point, I want to focus on the importance of getting politics right. This talks to our ability to establish functioning and transparent systems of democracy and accountability. We need to be able to address, as a continent, the origins and impact of conflict and instability. Having elected governments, including local government systems, is crucial. If we hope to implement the development we require in growing capabilities and ensuring infrastructure investment, we have to ensure the accountability of our institutions of governance in order to build the trust of our citizens and, importantly, of the global investment community. Developing the fiscal capacity for effective taxation and budgeting regimes is a crucial aspect of the liftoff we need. 
I have a saying that goes something like we should start spending, uh, spelling ODA as TAX. The more taxes we collect, the more independent we will be.